Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria was a Colombian drug lord and narco-terrorist who was the author and sole leader of the Medellin combination dubbed the King of Cocaine. Escobar was the flush miscreant in history having amassed an estimated net worth of 30 billion bones by the time of his death original to 70 billion bones as of 2022 while his medicine combination sewed up the cocaine trade into the United States in the 1980s and early 1990s born in Rey Amigro and raised in Medellin Escobar studied briefly at Universidad Autónoma Latin Americana of Medellin but left without graduating he rather began engaging in felonious exertion dealing illegal cigarettes and fake lottery tickets as well as sharing in motor vehicle theft in the early 1970s he began to work for colorful medicine bootleggers frequently abducting and holding people for rescue in 1976 Escobar innovated the Meadowland combination which distributed grease paint cocaine and established the first smuggling routes from Peru Bolivia and Ecuador through Colombia and ultimately into the United States Escobar's infiltration into the U.S. created exponential demand for cocaine, and by the 1980s it was estimated Escobar LED yearly shipments of 70 to 80 tons of cocaine into the country from Colombia. As a result, he snappily came one of the richest people in the world, but constantly battled rival syndicates domestically and abroad leading to butcheries and the murders of police officers, judges, locals, and prominent politicians. Making Colombia the murder capital of the world in the 1982 Colombian administrative election, Escobar was tagged as an alternate member of the Chamber of Representatives as part of the liberal indispensable movement. Through this, he was responsible for community systems similar as the construction of houses and football fields, which gained him fashionability among the locals of the municipalities that he visited. Still, Escobar's political intentions were baffled by the Colombian Andudadas. Governments who routinely pushed for his arrest with Escobar extensively believed to have orchestrated the DAS structure and Avianca Flight 203 bombings and retribution in 1991 Escobar surrendered to authorities and was doomed to five times imprisonment on a host of charges but struck a deal of no repatriation with Colombian chairpersons as Archiviria with the capability of being housed in his own tone. Erected captivity law edifice in 1992 Escobar escape and went into caching when authorities tried to move him to a more standard holding installation leading to a civil manhunt. As a result, the order and combination atrophied, and in 1993, Escobar was killed in his birthplace by Colombian public police a day after his 44th birthday. Escobar's heritage remains controversial while numerous denounced the heinous nature of his crimes. He was seen as a Robin Hood. Such like figure for numerous in Colombia as he handed numerous amenities to the poor his payoff was mourned and his burial attended by. Over 25,000 people also his private estate Hacienda Naples has been converted into a theme domain his life has also served as alleviation for, or has been dramatized extensively in film, TV, and in music early life Pablo Emilio. Escobar Gaviria was born on December 1, 1949 in Ryan Negro Antioquia Department. He was the third of seven children and grew up in the neighboring megacity of Medellin. His father was a small planter, and his mama was a schoolteacher. Escobar left high school in 1966 just before his 17th birthday before returning two times laterally with his kinsman Gustavo Javiria. At this time, the hard life on the thoroughfares of Midland had polished them into gangbanger bullies in the eyes of preceptors. The two dropped out of academy. After further than a time, but Escobar, who didn't give up compactly, came independent in Latin America by forging high school warrants. He also studied in council with the thing of getting a felonious council, a politician, and ultimately the chairman, but had to give up because of lack of plutocrat felonious career. Escobar began his felonious career in 1966. Escobar is brooded to have started his felonious career with his gang by stealing monuments, sandblasting their eulogies, and Reselling them, though his most likely first crime was street fraud after dropping out of academy, Escobar began to join auto theft gangs, and at the age of 20 was formerly a menage name for auto stealers. He and his gang stole buses and disassembled them to vend their corridor, and with enough plutocrat on hand, Escobar gasconaded officers to censor his spoil. While the rest records have been lost, Escobar supposedly sat in a middle in captivity for several months before his 20th birthday. Escobar soon came. Involved in violent crime employing culprits to abduct people who owed him plutocrat and demand preservations occasionally tearing up tickets indeed when Escobar entered the rescue his most notorious hijacking victim was businessman Diego Echeverria, who was abducted and ultimately killed in the summer of 1971. Escobar entered a 50,000 bones ransom from the Icaveria family as gang came well known for this hijacking Medellin group Escobar had been involved in systematized crime for a decade when the cocaine trade began to spread in Colombia in the mid 
1970s one of Colombia's first medicine dealers was Fabio Restrivo who packed about 40 to 60 kilograms of cocaine to Miami formerly or doubly a time under Escobar's architect Restrepo was assassinated in 1975 and Escobar seized his request in. Business Escobar's gradational rise also caught the attention of the Colombian Security Service DAS who arrested him in May 1976 on his return from medicine trafficking in Ecuador DAS agents set up 39 kilograms of cocaine in. The spare tire of Escobar's auto Escobar managed to change the first judge in the action and bridegroom the alternate judge, so he was released along with other captures the ensuing time the agent who arrested Escobar was assassinated Escobar continued to machinate with law. Enforcement in the Singh fashion strategy came to be known as tableware or lead or plutocrat or pellets although the essence and group was only established in the early 1970s it expanded after Escobar met several medicine lords on a ranch in April 1978 and by the end of 1978 they had transported some 19,000 kilograms of cocaine to the United States rise to elevation soon the demand for cocaine greatly increased in the United States which led to Escobar organizing further smuggling shipments. Roots and distribution networks in South Florida, California, Puerto Rico, and other corridor of the country, he and Cardinal co-founder Carlos Letter worked together to develop a new transshipment point in the Bahamas and Islet called Norman's Delvabout, 350 kilometers southeast of the Florida seacoast. According to his family, Escobar didn't buy Norman's K. It was rather a sole adventure of Letter's Escobar and Robert Vesco bought up most of the land on the islet, which included a one-kilometer. Heliport a harbor a hostile houses boats and aircraft, and they erected a refrigerated storehouse to store the cocaine from 1978 to 1982. This was used as a central smuggling route for the order in combination with the enormous gains. Generated by this route, Escobar was soon suitable to buy 20 square kilometers of land in Antioquia for several million bones on which he erected the Haitian and the Pates. The luxury house he created contained a zoo, a lake, a form theater, a private bullring, and other amenities for his family and the combination Escobar at the height of his power Escobar was also involved in philanthropy in Colombia and paid free-heartedly for the staff of his cocaine lab Escobar spent millions developing some of Magellan's purest neighborhoods he helped make roads power lines and soccer fields he also erected casing complexes for the homeless Escobar also entered politics in the 1970s and shared in and supported the conformation of the Liberal Party of Colombia in 1982 he successfully entered the Colombian Congress, although only an alternate, he was automatically granted administrative impunity and the right to a politic passport under Colombian law. At the same time, Escobar was gradationally getting a public figure. And because of his charitable work, he was known as Robin Hood Peza. He contended formerly in an interview that his fortune came from a bike rental company he innovated when he was 16 times old in Congress, the new Minister of Justice Rodrigo Lara Benalla. Had come Escobar's opponent criminating Escobar of felonious exertion from the veritably first day of Congress Escobar's arrest in 1976 was delved by Laura Bonilla's inferiors a many months latterly liberal leader Luis Carlos. Gallon expelled Escobar from the party, although Escobar fought back he blazoned his withdrawal from politics in January 1984. Three months latterly, Lara Benalla was boggled the Colombian judiciary had been a target of Escobar throughout the 1980s while buying and boggling several judges in the fall of 1985. The wanted Escobar requested the Colombian government to allow his tentative rendition without repatriation to the United States. The offer was originally answered in the negative and Escobar latterly innovated and implicitly supported the law's extraditable association, which aims to fight repatriation. Policy the Lost Extraditable Association was latterly indicted of sharing to help the Colombian Supreme Court from studying the constitutionality of Colombia's repatriation tree with the United States in support of the November 6, 1985. Far-left guerrilla movement that attacked the Colombian judiciary structure and killed half of the judges of the Supreme Court in late 1986 Colombia's Supreme Court declared the former repatriation convention illegal due to being inked by a Presidential delegation, not the chairman Escobar's palm over the judiciary was short. Lived with new chairman Bill Giliberto Vargas having snappily renewed his agreement with the United States, Escobar still held a grudge against Luis Carlos Gallon, who demurred him out of politics and was assassinated on August 18, 1989. At Escobar's orders, Escobar also planted a limon on Avianca Flight 203 in an attempt to bump off Gallon's successor, Cazar Gaviria Trujillo, who missed the airplane and survived but was on board all 107 people. 
were killed in the blast because two Americans were also killed in the bombing the U.S. government began to intermediate directly law cathedral captivity after the assassination of Luis Carlos Gallen the administration of. Caesar Gaviria moved against Escobar and the Medicine Cardinals. Ultimately, the government negotiated with Escobar and induced him to surrender and cease all felonious exertion in exchange for a reduced judgment and preferential treatment during his prison, declaring an end to a series of former violent acts meant to press authorities and public opinion. Escobar surrendered to Colombian authorities in 1991. Before he gave himself up, the repatriation of Colombian citizens to the United States had been banned by the recently approved Colombian Constitution of 1991. This act was controversial as it was suspected that Escobar and other medicine lords had told members of the Constituent Assembly in passing the law Escobar was confined in what came his luxurious private captivity law cathedral which featured a Football pitch a giant dollhouse, a bar, a jacuzzi, and cascade accounts of Escobar's continued felonious conditioning while in captivity began to surface in the media, which urged the government to essay to move him to a further conventional jail on July 22, 1992. Escobar's influence allowed him to discover the plan in advance and make a successful escape, spending the remainder of his life escaping the police particular life in March 1976. The 26. Time old Escobar married Maria Victoria Hino, who was 15. The relationship was discouraged by the Hina family who considered Escobar socially inferior the Paraloque. They had two children, Juan Pablo and now of Sebastian Marroquin and Manuela in 2007. The intelligencer ABC Darian de Vallejo published her bio Loving Pablo Abhorring Escobar in which she describes her romantic relationship with Escobar and the links of her nut with several chairpersons Caribbean tyrants and high-profile politicians. Her book inspired the movie Loving Pablo a Medicine. Distributor Griselda Blanco is also reported to have conducted a covert but passionate relationship with Escobar. Several particulars in her journal link him with the aliases Coke Demire, My Coke King, and Paula Blanca Whitecock parcels after. Getting fat Escobar created or bought multitudinous places and safe houses with the Haitian and Nepal's gaining significant notoriety. The luxury house contained a colonial house, a sculpture park, and a complete zoo with creatures from colorful mainlands including mammoths, fantastic catcalls, giraffes, and hippopotamuses. Escobar had also planned to construct a Greek-style citadel near it, and though construction of the citadel was started, it was no way finished. Escobar also possessed a home in the U.S. Under his own name, a 604 square measures pink waterfront mansion positioned at 5860 North Bay Road in Miami Beach, Florida, the four. Bedroom estate erected in 1948 on Biscayne Bay was seized by the U.S. civil government in the 1980s latterly. The Dilapidated property was possessed by Christian de Birdware, owner of the Chicken Kitchen fast food chain, who had bought it in 2014. De Birdware would latterly hire a talkie film crew and professional treasure Nimrods to search the edifice before and after obliteration for anything related to Escobar or his combination. They would find unusual holes in bottoms and walls as well as a safe. That was stolen from its hole in the marble flooring before it could be duly examined. Escobar also possessed a huge Caribbean flight on Isla Grande, the largest of the cluster of the 27 coral cluster islets comprising Idlis del Rosario, located about 35 kilometers from Cartagena. The emulsion, now partial demolished and overhauled by foliage and wild creatures, featured a mansion, apartments, yards, a large swimming pool, a copter wharf pad, corroborated windows, tiled bottoms, and a large butt. Untreated structure to the side of the man's death, Escobar faced pitfalls from the Colombian police, the U.S. government, and his rival, the Cali Combination. On December 2, 1993, Escobar was set up in a house in a middle class domestic area of Medellin. A Colombian special forces using technology handed by the United States police tried to arrest Escobar, but the situation snappily escalated to an exchange of gunfire. Escobar was shot and killed while trying to escape from the roof he was hit by. Pellets in the torso and bases and a pellet which struck him in the observance killing him. This sparked debate about whether he killed himself or whether he was shot dead. Fate of his death soon after Escobar's death and the posterior fragmentation of the order and combination. The cocaine request came dominated by the rival Cali combination until the mid-1990s when its leaders were either killed or captured by the Colombian government. The Robin Hood image that Escobar had cultivated maintained. A continuing influence in the Dillon numerous there especially numerous of the megacities poor whom Escobar had backed while he was alive mourned his death, and over 25,000 people attended his burial some of them consider him a saint and supplicate to him for. Entering divine help Escobar was buried at the Monte Sacro Cemetery on July 4, 
2006 Virginia Vallejo, a TV anchorwoman romantically involved with Escobar from 1983 to 1987, offered Attorney General Mario Igarin her evidence in the trial against former Senator Alberto Santafimio, who was indicted of conspiracy in the 1989 assassination of presidential seeker Luis Carlos Galanagarin conceded that although Vallejo had communicated his office on July 4, the judge had decided to close the trial on 9. July several weeks before the prospective ending date, the action was seen as too late on July 18. 2006 Malaysia was taken to the United States on a special flight of the Drug Enforcement Administration DEA for safety and security reasons due to her cooperation in high. Profile felonious cases on July 24, a videotape in which Vallado had indicted Santo Fimio of instigating Escobar to exclude presidential seeker Jelan was vented by RCN TV of Colombia. The videotape was seen by 14 million people and was necessary for the restarted case of Gallon's assassination on August 31, 2011. San Efimio was doomed to 24 times in captivity for his part in a crime part in the Palace of Justice siege among Escobar's hagiographers. Only Vallejo is given a detailed explanation of his part in the 1985. Palace of Justice siege intelligence are stated that Escobar had financed the operation which was committed by N-19, but she criticized the army for the killings of further than 100 people including 11 Supreme Court. Adjudicators and 19 members and workers of the cafeteria her statements urged the reopening of the case in 2008. Vallejo was asked to swear and numerous of the events she had described in her book and validation were verified by Colombia's Commission of Truth. These events led to farther disquisition into the siege that redounded with the conviction of a high. Ranking former colonel and a former general latterly doomed to 30 and 35 times in captivity independently for the forced exposure of the detained after the siege, Vallejo would latterly swear in Gallon's assassination in her book Loving Pablo Hitting. Escobar, she had indicted several politicians including Colombian chairpersons Alfonso Lopez, Michelson, Ernesto Samper, and Alvaro Varabe of having links to medicine syndicates due to pitfalls and her cooperation in these cases on June 3. 2010, the United States granted political shelter to the Colombian intelligence. Her cousins Escobar's widow Maria Hina's son Juan Pablo and son Manuela fled Colombia in 1995 after failing to find a country that would grant them shelter despite Escobar's multitudinous. In continual infidelities, Maria remained probative of her hubby members of the Cali combination indeed replayed the recordings of her exchanges with Pablo for their women to demonstrate how a woman should bear this station proved to be the reason the combination didn't kill her and her children after Pablo's death. Although the group demanded and entered millions of bones and restitutions for Escobar's war against them, Hino indeed successfully negotiated for her son's life I tete tete guaranteeing he'd not seek vengeance against the combination or share in the medicine trade after escaping first to Mozambique, also to Brazil. The family settled in Argentina living under her assumed name, Hino came a successful real estate entrepreneur. Until one of her business associates discovered her true identity and Hino land with her earnings, original media were advised, and after being exposed as Escobar's widow, Hanna was locked for 18 months while her finances were delved eventually. Authorities were unfit to link her finances to illegal exertion, and she was released according to her son and now fell in love with Escobar because of his mischievous smile and the way he looked at her he was tender and sweet a great nut I fell in love with his. Desire to help people and his compassion for their difficulty we drive to places where he pictured of structure seminaries for the poor from the morning he was always a gentleman Maria Victoria and now de Escobar with her new identity ass. Maria Isabel Santos Caballero continues to live in Buenos Aires with her son and son on June 5, 2018. The Argentine civil judge Nestor Barrel indicted her and her son Sebastian Marroquin Santos of plutocrat laundering with two Colombian medicine merchandisers. The judge ordered the seizing of means for about one million bones each. Argentinian filmmaker Nicholas Intel's Talky Sins of My Father chronicles Morican sweats to seek remission on behalf of his father from the sons of Rodrigo Lara. Colombia's justice minister who was assassinated in 1984 as well as from the sons of Luis Carlos Gallon, the presidential seeker who was assassinated in 1989. The film was shown at the 2010 Sundance Film Festival and premiered in the U.S. on HBO in October 2010. In 2014, Mauro Keen published Pablo Escobar, My Father Under His Birth Name. The book provides a first hand sapience into details of his father's life and describes the unnaturally disintegrating effect of his death upon the family Moro Quinn aimed to publish the book in expedience to resolve any inaccuracies regarding his father's excursions during the 
1990s Escobar's family lose Maria Escobar also made multiple gestures and attempts to make amends for the Medicine Baron's crimes these include making public statements in the press leaving letters on the graves of his victims and on the 20th anniversary of his death organizing a public keepsake for his victims Escobar's body was disinterred on October 28th. 2006 at the request of some of his cousins in order to take a DNA sample to confirm the alleged maternity of an illegitimate child and remove each doubt about the identity of the body that had been buried next to his parents for 12 times. A videotape of the inhumation was broadcast by Roishan entering Maro Keen who indicted his uncle Roberto Escobar and kinsman Nicholas Escobar of being merchandisers of death by allowing the videotape to state Hacienda de Poles after Escobar's death the estate zoo and stronghold at Case in the Pates were given by the government to downward. Income families under a law called sphere extermination the property has been converted into a theme domain girdled by four luxury hospices overlooking the zoo Escobar incorporated in 2014 Roberto. Escobar Innovated Escobar Inc. with Olaf K. Gustafson and registered successor in interest rights for his family Pablo Escobar in California United States Hippos Escobar kept four hippos in a private menagerie at Haitian to Naples they were supposed. Too delicate to seize and move after Escobar's death and hence left on the untended estate by 2007 the creatures had multiplied to 16 and had taken to roving the area for food in the near Magdalena River in 2009 two grown-ups and one shin escaped the Heard and after attacking humans and killing cattle, one of the grown-ups called Pepe was killed by Nimrods under authorization of the original authorities as of early 2014. 40 hippos have been reported to live in Porto Triunfo. Antioquia department from the original four belonging to Escobar without operation the population size is likely to more than double in the coming decade. The National Geographic Channel produced a talkie about them named Cocaine Hippos, a report published in a Yale pupil. Magazine noted that original environmentalists are campaigning to cover the creatures, although there's no clear plan for what will be to them in 2018. National Geographic published another composition on the hippos which set up disagreement among environmentalists on whether they were having a positive or negative impact, but the conservationists and locals, particularly those in the tourism assiduity, were substantially in support of their continued presence by October 2021, the Colombian. Government had started a program to emasculate the hippos using a chemical to make them infertile on February 22, 2019 at 11.53 m. Original time, Medellin authorities demolished the six-story Edificio Monaco apartment complex in the El Poblado neighborhood where, according to retired Colombian General Rosso Jose Serrano Escobar planned some of his utmost brazen attacks, the structure was originally erected for Escobar's. Woman, but was eviscerated by a Cali Cart Al Auto Lemon in 1988 and had remained unoccupied ever since getting in magnet to foreign excursionists seeking out Escobar's physical heritage. Mayor Federico Gutierrez had been pushing to raise the structure and erect in its place a domain recognizing the thousands of combination victims, including four presidential campaigners and some 500 police officers. Colombian chairman Ivan Duke said the obliteration means that history isn't going to be written in terms of the perpetrators, but by fading the victims hoping the obliteration would showcase that the megacity had evolved significantly and had further to offer than the heritage left by the cardinals.